Can you hear me? Ah. So, a very good morning to all. So, we are welcoming you to the second session of Advances in Highway Technology and Traffic Systems, Day 3. So, we have with us resource person, Dr. T.R. Nisar Ahmad. So, I welcome you, sir. So, sir, as working as, as Associate Professor at MS Ramaya Institute of Technology, Bangalore. He holds MTech from NIT Suratkal and PhD from IIT Bombay. His areas of interest include Enterprise GIS Implementation, ICT for Smart City and Sustainable Development, Decision Support System, 3D BIM Modeling, etc. He has over 18 years of substantial proven and versatile work experience in practical geographic information system application development, analysis, and implementation in, a, in many domains, such as utility infrastructure management, water transmission system, urban development, and resource optimization at enterprise level. STI implementation, 3D BIM modeling, smart implementation, etc. <clears throat> he worked as consultant at different capacities for Parsons Corporation, Promat Solutions, Center for Urban and Rural Infrastructure Planning Enterprise, etc., for some of the major overseas GIS implementation projects. He also worked as faculty in teaching water sources, geomatic engineering courses, as well as technical coordinator for establishment of Geomatics Engineering Technology Program at Yanbu <coughs> College, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. <coughs> Sir, is a <coughs> Sir is a certified product management professional and adopts extensive use of PMI guidelines for project initiation planning and implementation, SDLC approach for projects. With this brief uh, introduction regarding you, I welcome you, sir, for this program. Over to you, sir. Yeah, good afternoon to everyone. Yeah, uh, thank you, Professor Das, uh, you. Professor Nandish. Especially thanks to RIT for giving me this uh, opportunity for this webinar. Now, when we talk about the topic advances in surveying technology, the one thing it goes into mind is where we are compared to last decade, especially last 10 years or 15 years back. That is the one thing. Uh, so I just would like to put forward. 15 years back, 20 years back, when some survey opportunities are there, let's say the opportunity is to survey 100 acres of a land. So normally, so there used to be a, uh, the crew members, 10 or 15 members with all hefty, uh, the instruments like plane table, blah, 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 they were going to the field, going to the field and untiringly. So they were doing the, the field survey. So something like uh, uh, days together, months, day months or days together. And ultimately the outcome was a hard copy map. We call it as a hard copy map. So that rigorously, it has to be processed to make it effective for the uh, decision making. Now those days have gone now. So now for 100 acres of land to have a surveying with advanced technology, like the drones we have, we have the, the active remote sensing, the, all the process for 100 acres can be done in days or in hours. And then you know what is the outcome? The outcome is nothing but the smart map, smart images, which can be processed for different application, application like uh, the smart cities, 
application like uh, uh, for any of the application like for the vehicle tracking system or uh, the uh, agriculture or in different domains okay so there is a leap technological advance advances in surveying is happened this all happened because of the it enabled services be it be drone technology be it be a, a lidar technology scanning technology what would may be where the concept of so the it enable uh, services into picture so with this introduction i will start the, the my webinar so probably it will be interesting one so i will take uh, 40 45 minutes to start with so here we go so this is the outline Okay. So this is the outline of presentation. First, we'll have a quick, so the quick discussion on uh, the geospatial technology transforming the world, specifically focused on surveying mapping. Then we will have a discussion on, uh, so what basically is a geospatial technology? So the components and all. Then, uh, so all we talk about nowadays, data, uh, data centric, uh, the IoT, the sensors, the IoT, the sensors, the data centric and all. So we'll talk about the importance of the data. That's how it will be. Then a quick um, uh, overview of uh, integrated GS and mapping. This is what, when we say surveying, always the mapping should be there. So the surveying and mapping, it will go hand in hand. Then, uh, so I will highlight with the use cases, two use cases, one focus to enterprise utility system. The another one is a application called call before dig, which we have developed. And finally, the floor is open for discussions followed with question and answers. Now, so when we talk about the, the geospatial technology focused to survey and mapping, the first thing it comes into picture is one second. Yeah, the first thing it comes into picture is the geospatial technology, which you are also aware of. This technology, so we also call it the geometrics, geometrics engineering technology. What basically is this technology? This technology, see, used to describe range of modern tools. The meeting closed. Video closed. No, no. Video closed. No, no. Meeting like that. Meeting and exit are good. No, no. Oh. One second. So just put in the group to join again, sir, and start the session. You know, Becca? Check my. You are there, then. No, you're there, no. You continue, sir. Hmm? Continue, continue. Yeah. So basically, when we say geospatial uh, technology, it consists of the four. It, it uh, includes four components. First is the GIS. So GIS is a old term now. Now we call it as a spatial analytics. So because of uh, data analytics part. The second component of the geospatial technology is the GNS and position system. Basically, it deals with the position system. The third one is the Earth observation, US basically focus on remote sensing, data capturing and all, followed by the scanning. So followed by scanning. If you look into the first one, the GIS, it's a framework for gathering, managing, analyzing spatial data, which everyone now in engineering colleges, almost all, let it be civil engineering, mechanical engineering, electronics, computer science, everywhere aware of. So what is this, uh, the GIS? The next, so GIS basically, it deals with the location, conditions, the trends, the pattern, and model. When you say location, where is the location? X, Y coordinate, location of a manhole, luxury corner, a condition, condition of the manhole, whether it is a full, whether it is a hop, and the trends. So the trends with respect to the time, what has happened when compared, when, when it has been uh, executed? 
and then how it behaves over a period of time. So, for example, the when water flows over the pipeline, how it behaves over a period of time, and then we can also have a scenario analysis, the modeling. So, modeling and spot if that is scenario analysis. The second component is GSS, the uh, the global uh, navigation system. It's a general term. So, where we have the GPS, even Indian. Uh, uh, GPS is there, Russian GPS is there, China's GPS is there, European Union GPS is there. So all comes under uh, GNSS. And then third one is the which we are familiar with the various type of satellites. The fourth one is the state of, of art of scanning this LIDAR is there, other active remote sensing processes. So if you look into the one by one, one by one, the first comes the GIS. That's what I saw, I was referring. GIS is also called uh, now the spatial analytics, which can be accessed through desktop, mobile, web, and cloud. Web and cloud. So when I started way back in 1985-86, or uh, to to be exact, in 91, uh, see it was only the the workstation or uh, desktop version. The uh, uh, the capability was limited to capturing of data, mapping of the data, and visualizing data. With the advancement, the modeling analysis came. So now, because of the fourth industri industrial revolution, uh, the uh, technologies related to IoT sensors and uh, other, it is possible to integrate a real time uh, real time system with a GIS. That's what we call it as a Geo IoT. Similarly, it is also possible now if you integrate Joe's special technology with uh, artificial intelligence like deep learning, machine learning, it is possible to have a futuristic analysis. The forecasting today, tomorrow, giving the historical data of the previous one. And the last one, because of this, so it so happened that now everyone now going for the GS itself has gone on the uh, the uh, on the cloud or the on the subscription model okay so since i so the real time monitoring is there so the technology like geo iot is uh, into picture now is very popular similarly geo uh, ai geography inference system integrated with the artificial intelligence next comes the uh, position system under that we all aware of the gps so us uh, uh, the uh, gps system gns system so under GNSS, we have many GPS system, for example, the IRNS, the Indian uh, GPS system, BDS, the Chinese GPS system, Galileo is there from the, uh, the European Union and Russians. So like the majority of the country, their own uh, GPS system uh, G, uh, under the genesis. However, the most popular is uh, the GPS from the United States. The another one, the popular is uh, the indoor position system called IPS, where the sometimes in the GPS specifically, there is a problem in capturing the signals, all, especially uh, on the basement, car parking and all. So to, uh, to overcome this, uh, the new technology called new system called the IPS is a popular now. And then the, the last one is specifically focused to surveying. So the we have the RTKs, we have the GPA, GPRS, RTKs, and then uh, DGPS, all this comes under the surveying. So where the accuracy ranges from uh, uh, the uh, mm, uh, base centimeter to mm. So it is possible to have an accuracy to reach up to the mm level. Okay. So the next comes the uh, remote sensing part. So where the data will be captured through the satellite, air moon, on the different platform, like a satellite, airborne, aerial photograph, and then the last one is through the drones. So now the, the technology has uh, developed in such a way that, so those days have gone. So where we had the resolution of uh, 100, 100 meters, 110 meters, now with the commercial, we can achieve a resolution of even to 0 0.35 centimeters. Similarly here, if you see here, so this is the uh, the uh, uh, quick, I mean, uh, the uh, world view satellite data with a resolution of uh, 0.35 meter. Similarly, the when it comes to remote sensing, especially the, uh, the passive remote sensing, the spectral, when say the spectral bands, so earlier it was only four, now 
because of the advent in technology the hyperspectral ultra spectral so uh, the, even the uh, the uh, the bands in terms of 100 more than 100 is possible now when it comes to aerial photography so the days have gone where uh, we used to get uh, the 3 inches data now it is possible to get 2.5 cm uh, of resolution and drones you know very well and the finally so we have the uh, the lidar with uh, uh, aerial photography and also we, uh, i mean uh, the drones with the lidar and aerial photography and tls is there and followed by augmented reality so when we talk about the technology and all it is very much essential how the evolution of a geospatial technology has developed specifically focused to uh, the surveying and mapping so first it started in 1832 so uh, in paris they prepare a map just it was called the heat map nobody was knowing about the concept of gsnr so it was first in 1832 so they prepared a first map they prepared a map for heat map followed by in 1854 they prepared the map to uh, demarcate to show the depth of cholera in uk and then in 1962 Dr. Roger Tomlinson, he gave the idea for data and maps. At that time, still the, the word, the concept of GS was not there. Whereas in 1965, the term GS was first published in the report. And in 1967, Dr. Roger Tomlinson, a Canadian uh, uh, the geographer, he first presented the, the term, the usage of the term GAS. This was GAS. And I should... Uh, 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 make a note here that Dr. Roger Tomlinson, he died in the 2014 and he is called the father of GIS or geography system. On his memory, annually, I mean every year, the GS day is celebrated whole across the globe for his contribution to the geospatial technology. In 1965, the first uh, uh, the ISRI was uh, formed by Jock, uh, uh, Jock Dangerman. 1972, the first Landsat satellite was launched. Similarly, 1980, effectively, LiDAR technology has been developed. However, the LiDAR concept of LiDAR technology was popular after, 19, after 1995, ever since the US launched the first well operational GPS system. 1981, the first easy user conference uh, conference was arranged with just 16 attendees. Whereas in 1982, the first ARC Info commercial GS package was developed. 1986, the computer for ARC Info Map Info was released. 1991, the first European remote sensing satellite was launched. At the same time, in 1991, the RPUGAS was, was launched. 1993, the first web-based interactive map was released. At the same time, in 1993, first laser scanning by CIRA technology launched. Similarly, 1994, web, web map server, WebGS, all the uh, they started 1990 fully functional gps gps facility was operational 1999 rgs release so the uh, window base it was released and the first gs day was celebrated in november 19 similarly the iconos satellite data was launched Nineteen ninety six internet based GS product was released by ESRA. Nineteen ninety six, ninety seven. Sorry, the Leica Geo system focused to the surveying and mapping, so was uh, launched. Two thousand four Open Street Map was launched. Two thousand five Google launched Google Map Google Earth. Whereas two thousand ten and two thousand fourteen in this duration the RGS online uh, release. So the cloud-based um, approach where with the Hadoop GS for to manage the big data. Whereas in uh, 2017, the all the real time 
data centric technologies where the integration of the iot the real time big data so machine learning gs all it has started in 2017 and this is the where the fourth industrial revolution has started which is also called the connectedness or cyber physical system and this year is popularly called the integration year so this is the way from 1932 till now this is the journey of the uh, how the evolution of geo special technology has taken place now what is the current status now so it has the gas because of the enabling technology it has gone into every the sector be in agriculture be in water services be in commercial be in business everywhere so how do we read the future the future of geo special technology is very promising when these technologies are combined with uh, the new technologies artificial intelligence cloud computing iot digital twins ar vr vr now so the the all the technology which uh, in the previous slide so we were discussing about the the artificial intelligence the machine learning the iot the big data the digital twin sensor all all they are built with the data so without data there is no iot without the data there is no sensor without data so nothing is there so everywhere the huge and crisis of data 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 that means that all what we have is the data driven technology that's that's how we call data is a new oil so i was just i was reading somewhere uh, in the article that the next war is not on the water the next war will be for the data the ownership of the data okay so what is the big deal over the data yes more data leads to more information more information leads to better decision better decision leads to good conclusion and then uh, the also when we say the data especially from the geospatial technology it is called the big spatial data or bsd it comes the data comes from uh, the surveying satellite images networking iot and sensors location and system so all this data it comes under uh, Uh, the we we call this as a big data which will have the three views three views that is the the big data in terms of the huge value in terms of the velocity and also in terms of the uh, the variety so having said that it's a data driven technology we should also keep in mind that we should have the policy and procedure to maintain the data standard to maintain to develop the special uh, special data infrastructure sdi and then the data should be in a such a way that it should be changeable or interoperable we should have the data quality data completeness and the, the finally the data security okay when we say data 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 especially the geospatial data it is also essential that how one is collecting the data so what are the technology what are the methods to collect the data to analyze the data to process data to process data and get the and the ready for the uh, gs mapping the first it comes into the so the data collection can be done in two stages one is in situ in situ in the sense where one has to go to the field collect the go to the make the measurement collect the sample do the data. so do the the collection this is called the field data or in situ in situ the second one is we call it as a data can be collected remotely so such as now the the earth observation system where the data can be obtained from the satellite or from space borne air borne and now the popular is the uav or the drones so this is called the data can be collected remotely this is where the term the remote sensing is coming to picture and specifically in the present day where we have the the covid situation all we we define the term remote sensing as a, the it is a collecting info while maintaining physical distance this is exactly where the the definition uh, the coinciding with the the, uh, the present uh, pandemic situation now this is a one where beautiful snapshot i have taken from uh, some of the uh, the uh, organizations it shows the the snapshots shows that the situation in 1995 and situation after 25 years that is a 2020 in 1995 the all our kids you know they were they are playing the kites 
whereas because of the uh, the advancement in technology it enabled system computer hardware the software and all the the kids now they are using the drones they are using the drones to capture the information that to when it is almost a real time near real time this is how the earth observation is being exploited with the kids and now everywhere everywhere you go for any occasions the people are behind to take what is the real time scenario scenario so the earth observation now it is very much dominating because of the following advantages it provides a data for large areas global coverage so even the it's possible to get the information uh, of the object in 3d real time so and more important thing is data can be access data can be access at a remote region and also the repeatability so daily monthly weekly so whatever you want based upon the the clients or customers requirement so data can be uh, they collected repeatedly and also once your data is available it is not only restricted for one application it can be used for multi purpose information and relatively when compared to uh, the field survey where the team has to go to the field uh, with a lot of team member uh, the crews and all so we can say that the so the earth observation system are getting the images relatively inexpensive however given these advantages it is essential that one has to supplement these technology these images with the the uh, the field field data field data no so when we talk about the data 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 and also it is essential that we should discuss about the platform and sensors and all so these are the <clears throat> so these are the uh, the platform for getting data one is uh, the data can be the sensors can be embedded on the platform spatial bone it can be on the air bone it can be on the ground base that's what the, the drone is there okay so next is about the resolutions when we talk about the data specifically useful for the surveying and mapping we should always talk about the resolution so we have the different kind of resolution, special resolution which gives the pixel uh, the resolution of the pixel spectral resolution which gives the bandwidth for each for example a uh, days have gone now earlier it was only the black and white or panchromatic images or just four bands mss data then it came the micro the hyperspec data now it is possible to achieve thousands of bands ultra spectral ultra spectral so that means that so more number of the bands leads to more information specifically uh, when come to agriculture the crop stress crop yield and then especially for the the uh, emergency uh, analysis and also we have the the temporally for example when come to temporal uh, the data so now earlier it was once in 20 days 16 days now it is possible that almost every day it is possible to receive the data okay so the next resolution is the radiometric resolutions where so earlier we had the 8 bit data 256 colors then 1024 colors now it is possible to have a high definition or 16 bit data okay okay so these are the uh, some of the uh, these uh, the satellites from the indian uh, from india remote sensing so these are the satellites i'm not going into details so these are the resolution of uh, uh, different satellites for example irs is 3 23.5 meter similarly this is the uh, the uh, data for the kuwait region so list one 5.8 meter resolution this is the cartosat 2.5 meter black and gray scale that is a panchromatic data similarly so these are the how the improvement of uh, the spatial technology as per as india is concerned so from 360 meter 188 meter 76 meter 36 meter 23 meter 5 meter and 1 meter so this is for the delhi region and this is how the the india remote sensing uh, data used for applications related to rain and water ocean weather and climate 
And this is the same thing to appreciate the resolution, the spatial resolution of the data. So, for example, 23.5 meter, 5.8 meter, 2.5 meter, then 0.6 meter, 0.65 meter, 0.5 meter. And now, the commercial available, the highest resolution data is a world view 3 or world view 4 with 0.3 meter. So you can see here a sample of the data, uh, world view 4, where the beautifully, even if you zoom in properly, the vehicles can be captured. So the, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the demarcation of the building, demarcation of the vegetation, and uh, at the same time, so in addition to the, uh, the special spectral bands are available for better analysis. So this is the one where the aerial photography with the six resolution, and uh, here it is a uh, one inch, two inch, and one inch. One inch in the sense of two point five centimeters. So where you can see, the, you can you can demar, you can see. So that was the, the more special data. Excuse me, sir. One minute. For all the participants, please mute your mic. For this is Gaurav Singh. For which the guide is taking interest. Mr. Gaurav, uh, sir, you can continue. Yeah. So this so more uh, uh, the uh, finer resolution uh, it offers a great deals the great details for uh, various purposes especially from the visualization point of view the planning visualization navigation and also the change detection and monitoring in different domains. So this is the slide which shows how the technology uh, the development has been taken place especially from the satellite uh, uh, the Earth observation and the images concerned. 1960, the see uh, the NOAA satellite, land satellite. It has uh, the application was limited only for the mapping. So, over uh, 1990, the monitoring change detection started with IRS. The the quant uh, the qualitative assessment started with the spot iconos. The development of the models for the growth identity started. Whereas now, with the the current uh, high resolution images, especially for the World View Two, World View Three. Specifically, the forecasting model has been started. Okay, so at the same, so here, this is how it is the the resolution first started the corona, corona satellite, landsat, spot, early early bird, future, and then all the future. So this means that the summary is more satellites, more solution, more satellites, more data, more data, more information, more information. In the sense, it leads to more solutions. So at present, what we have is good spatial resolution, temporal resolution even can begin up to one day, in a one day, spectral resolution, it has gone to the ultra. And then at the same time now, so specifically from the Indian context, so more and more sm small and low cost satellite also they are launching. They are launching now, it's already started. So this means that more finer data, less cost, frequency from monthly to daily. And this definitely it is an help or aid for especially so the from the application point of view on artificial intelligence machine learning. So this is the justification where so the in the in the past, you know, so the maps were used purely for visualization purpose and direction. Now it is used as a platform. Okay. Now we'll discuss something about the surveying mapping after after a discussing with the, the satellite image and technology. So we start with the remote sensing. So the passive remote sensing where everyone knows the, uh, the it will be occurred only during the daytime where the sun is a source of energy and then the, the sensor, different sensors mounted on different uh, uh, the platform. It will be captured by, it will be sent by a ground station, which will be processed, analyzed and all. So user limitation is that the, these uh, satellite images uh, are sensor operative only during the daytime. Whereas now, so we have a lot of uh, the active remote sensing uh, uh, the sensors are available, which can sense the data, which can sense the data irrespective of the time 
at any time so the popular uh, the uh, the uh, sensors like uh, the lidar land scanning drones drones are possible so when we first talk about the drone surveys so using the uh, aerial photography so where so here the different uh, the uh, high resolution photographs are taken um, taken from the drones so on board with the gps and all so where the individual photographs it uh, photographs will be stitched together or mosaic together to get a seamless images so even with the seamless images so where we can have the 2d and 3d because these images are uh, uh, with uh, uh, having the same area on the overlapping portions so where because of that the stereo is possible 3d is possible so these are all the passive remote sensing so these are the best suited for large scale uh, large scale surveys and so before that if you look into the surveys how the the technology has changed so we started uh, the even from the civil engineering perspective tour stations gps drones so almost all the drones are in common now so because of the uh, the drones technology it is possible uh, to access data any time time saving will be there so huge cost saving and then ultimately huge the accuracy of the data the another term which we use using a drone is a drone lidar so where so on the drones so the the lidar the lidar the sensor will be mounted so which will take the images at any time so 3d point cloud or uh, point cloud data is actually visible with that so the the best resolution uh, of the uh, images can be obtained and these are specifically suitable for uh, for the smaller area the next one specifically the underground surveys is the gpr method the all the ground penetration radar system so we have the the popularly the the mobile gpr or the another popular is the underground gpr so basically these are useful for uh, exploiting the subsurface material specifically from utility point of view depending upon the uh, the frequency and all so it is able to capture the underground utilities like so potable water metal uh, the pipelines of the plastic pipes different metal different materials and all however it's uh, the uh, the interpretation depends upon the skills of the person who is going to involved in this process okay so after after discussion with the uh, the satellite data technology and all the next is the how this data survey data can be used for the gs purpose or for the gs mapping so for the mapping the data comes from the husband may from satellite imagery it will have a metadata gs data tabular data or the data also from the cad drawings and all and that is supported with the operation maintenance manual and all when all these data after compilation and all okay so after compilation it will be fed with the as the program for scanning or extraction so what we can what we get is the the create uh, the uh, the creation of a geo database and if it is a small organization it is a geo uh, database if it is at the end, larger organization it is at the enterprise geo database once it is a enterprise geo database so the enterprise application can be developed which can be accessed on the desktop web mobile and different clients and this is one simple example where once the survey mapping is done the surveying is done how the the uh, the mapping can be done in an integrated way in an integrated approach specifically focused to utility system this is a one i have taken for a, a middle east uh, region where we have developed so this is a demo part this is the uh, the al patna regions uh, i have taken a districts and uh, on the to the right side so you have the road center line in your local and at the same time you have the land parcels and i have taken the a small portion at a small black level where to the left side you have the the land parcel on the right side you have the land parcel with the road center line shown in the yellow color 
and this is where the yeah. idea is how in an integrated fashion when the survey data is available when the data available on the such surface everything uh, everything is collected and everything is a, a store in a, a geo database either at the enterprise level or at the at the uh, organization level for different utilities so which will be helpful for to develop the network so here to the right side what you have seen here is specifically the different components of uh, electrical and street lighting starting from the transformers underground structures enhancement encasement buried cables conduit system second is this is the uh, the data so uh, which has been mapped to the same area focused to telecom network this again for the portable water network so where even the uh, the capturing of data has uh, uh, done up to the fitting level you can see here the fire had and fitting bend cap bend cap uh, the cross uh, the sleeves the tap everything has been done so this is the sanitary sewer network and this is the irrigation network so landscape network when all this one all this one are uh, Merged together, integrated together. So what we get is a integrated network where all the utilities, all utilities are overlaid over the base layer. This is what so the uh, the picture is the integrated utility system at the street level where see the for uh, for the so for example this is the road network. So where all the component of the road, for example, be it be it be electrical, potable water, irrigation. Uh, telecommunication in addition to that the land person and also the consumer level consumer level also shown and this type of integrated system specifically uh, helpful for uh, specifically the projects like uh, uh, the smart city project master planning project or the capacity project and this is our other application where we did for to showcase the, so the data driven technology so here what you have seen here is the same the utility management system with utilities showing the underground utilities above above ground utilities and also the reports excavation reports so it shows when you say utilities data what kind of utilities data when you say underground data where the underground data is available above ground data is available i mean you say so the excavation and reports so it's specifically present in the state of well, the state of art of review develops but so when the excavation has been taken place concrete payments and this is the, uh, the the this is the power of uh, the uh, the gis so what are the application of uh, the functional application the first is the we develop the address system and then uh, the geo coded with that service required specifically i will just in the next slide i will show you this is the one where for example we call this application called the call before dig specifically focused to rms road management system here this is specifically under one so uh, the uh, the uh, road system is there so where almost all utilities are ex uh, all exposed to the the uh, the contractor or the client one has to visualize where are the utilities are available so these the application may be the contractor or the client wants to do the expansion of the road or the repair of the utilities or laying the fiber optic cable maintenance whatever it may be the first thing is he must know where are the utilities are available different utilities are available and the request has to go to the the uh, the uh, the client the request has to go to the owner of the this, the owner of the utilities uh, through the online services that on particular this street this road excavation has to be uh, excavation has to be make out for the repair or laying of this one and this on the online services through the web service it has to show the next is what are those utilities that utilities may be a conduit it may be a gravity main 
it may be photo yeah. bottom in along with the pictures the visual pictures and all so first is where are the utilities available second is what type of utilities available and third one is what kind of excavation he has to do and when he has to do when he has to do and then how long it will how long it will take so through the online application the contractor who is going to repair whatever it may be he has to submit the forum on with the map that with all everything is online online so where the utilities what kind of utilities and then whether the duration of excavation is 10 days 15 days all it has to be done and then based upon the request the the client he will make a alternate route for the commod and finally once the excavation is completed the final is the updation of the map so the contractor has to submit the final as built drawing the latest updation in gs repository about the asset information about the, all the details completed and then along with that the contractor has to submit the completion report once all this one are submitted to the gis section so the, these are update on to the map so this is the complete life cycle approach for a project where the call before dig means the contractor before calling he can exploit you can see all the utilities he can see the various various location utilities what type of utilities and repairing when it has to be repaired what is the duration and once the repair has been done work has been completed he has to submit the final as built drawing so these are the two important uh, very simple uh, the uh, use cases adopting the geospatial technology once the data available from the survey and mapping is available so that's it for now so thank you very much the participant for uh, giving the opportunity uh, for this webinar so now the floor is open for discussion question and answers and uh, thank you sir for your presentation now participants can unmute and uh, can ask questions to sir i think some questions are there so i'll read out that so first question is they are asked what are the different sources for the data yes uh, das can you repeat sir what are the different sources for the data yeah see uh, when when it comes to data so the sources could be uh, for example if uh, already uh, the work has been done the source will be typically the as built drawing it will be satellite images as built drawing it may be hard copy map or it may be a, uh, the cad map satellite data tables and all so these are the important sources now the source is available now for the mapping and all uh, the drones and the different satellites data is available that makes the complete uh, uh, the source for the data second question is can you explain some common software which is used for this analysis see uh, specifically from the gs point of view uh, focus to the, the data capture data modeling data analysis the the popular software package which uh, all in, in fact in the globally are using is isri isri suits the arc info arc map and all and these are the commercial available software proprietary software where which you have to pay which you have to pay and which uh, you have to uh, get the licenses and it has to be continued uh, license annually renewing of the annually the other easy and the best source is the the open source software where we have the quantum gs qgs version 3 3.1 3.2 this is the best available software almost all the functionality almost all the tools are available which is available in the isri software and moreover if you take this open source software even the some of the technologies like the machine learning in gs the classification algorithm everything is available in this uh, open source software and there are m number of open source software so if you will google it you will have n number of uh, open source software which you can make use of another question from uh, priyanka 
So, Madam is asking, how can we use VAS for transportation mode choice studies? See, nowadays, so the lot of activities are going on specifically from the smart city point of view. So the people now what they are you what they are using is specifically uh, the mapping and all. Now it is a small concept. The concept has been gone now. For example, so for the mapping of the road network and all, uh, the uh, they were using the GIS and then once the data is available, they were scanning, automatic extraction, network development. Now the trend is how the GIS data has to be integrated with the sensors and IoT so that the real time information can be uh, can be obtained that's how so as i explained the concept geo iot is a, uh, is a, is very popular geo ai is very popular where the integration of a gis and then uh, iot is uh, taken the picture so specifically from the transportation point of view the traffic studies the traffic studies where the sensors are uh, embedded on the signals so that so it will sense the traffic, it will send it to the command control from the command control. So one can analyze that in a particular stretch, the traffic is more Then a broadcast can be done. So to, uh, to make an alternative route or broadcast can be done to not to uh, uh, go for the, uh, these uh, routes because of the heavy, heavy traffic is there. So there are a lot number of uh, uh, the applications available where the concept of the GIS and the IoT can be uh, integrated specifically in the transportation domain. Sir, another question is, uh, what do you mean by ortho mosaic map? What is that? Ortho mosaic maps. Ortho map. Yeah. See, usually, so when we when we take the aerial photography and all, so it will have. So what we get is the the raw data, and then that's precisely what we have, we have is the the. Uh, the surface with the curvature and all so these things the errors all the errors has to be uh, the overcome so we use normally the air triangulation method where the interconnection of the triangles are evolved through the air triangulation the errors errors all the errors will be removed and then that's how the final data after the air triangulation is called the ortho so ortho data which is a 2d data which is error free data which Directly, it can be used without any distortion. This is error-free data. It's called the ortho data. Thank you, sir. Sir, one more question is: How can you do survey during an adverse environment? For example, fog is spread. Can, can you repeat, Doctor Das? How can you do survey during adverse environment? Yeah. For see, th this is this is where the the active remote sensing part, remote sensing technology can be used specifically from the the drones and all the drones, the lidar and uh, and then the scanning surveys can be done. So where there is a uh, problem for accessing the features, accessing the uh, the area. So uh, it and then the other advantage is, for example, if you take the passive remote sensing, it can be done only during the daytime, whereas so the active remote sensing, it can be uh, sensed, the information extracted at any time, any time, and even in the worst possible condition. So during the rainy season, during the one monsoon season, even to the best, even the worst possible, the thermal season. Sir, one question from Mr. Neeraj Singh. Is the remote sensing data readily available for academic use for private institutions? Yes, this is very, very good questions. I should give big salutes to the person who writes. See, earlier, so for example, we used to get the data uh, freely. Uh, now still, you know, the Landsat data is available. The spot is available. Now, the European uh, the Space Agency, Sentinel-2A, A, A Sentinel-2A, 2B is available with the highest possible resolution of uh, the 10 meters, 20 meters and all, which is available. Uh, with a repetitive of uh, five days. So this is the data free of cost, open source data, which you can develop, which, which you can use for uh, all the purpose, be it with be traffic, be it for water resource, for any domain you can use freely available. So I think uh, questions are over. So with this, we come to end, end of uh, session two of day three. 
so on behalf of the department and on behalf of damaya institute of technology i thank nisa sir for giving a wonderful lecture on advanced uh, surveying techniques thank you sir thank you dr das thank you uh, professor all the professor uh, professor nandis dr das our hod the principal for giving such a fantastic opportunity for this webinar so we hope that so ramaya will be in a position to organize such a wonderful state of art adopting new technology in civil engineering in near future all the best thanks a lot thank you sir now for participants next session will start at 2:30 all are requested to join around 2:15 thank you thank you we will meet at 2:15